Hi. Assalamu alaikum. May the peace of God be upon each and every one of you. Welcome to Gems for the Traveler. My name is Imam Muhammad Abdul Aziz. I work at the Salam Center in Sacramento, California. In this series, we explore the different facets and the different names and attributes of God Almighty. This is the month of Ramadan, and Muslims come to the mosque in order to learn, in order to grow spiritually, and connect with their Creator. In this series, we attempt at learning more about God through studying His names. I invite each and every one of you to join us on this beautiful journey to learn more about the qualities and the attributes of the Creator of Heavens and Earth. Thank you so much for tuning in. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een It's an odd night and inshallah I'm hoping you'll understand the significance of Allah's name Al-Wahhab Al-Wahhab linguistically comes from Wahhaba and Wahhaba is to bestow a gift or to give a gift In fact the word for gift in Arabic that is often used by many people is Hiba when they uh, give something to someone uh, expecting no compensation whatsoever, it's called hiba, right? Uh, they call it wahabahu uh, uh, hibatan, or just uh, bestowed a gift uh, on them. What's what's the word for what's the word for talent uh, in Arabic? Mawhiba, right? In fact, in English, when someone has an amazing talent, they call they say that person is gifted. See? Gifted. It's the same. Two different languages, two different sources, but the word is the same. Gift, hiba, mawhiba, gifted. Right? And it's so interesting because talent is not something you have to work for. It's just something that Allah instills in you. It's in your genetic code. There are so many skills in this world that we can acquire if we work hard. Right? But there are certain things, certain things, and with technology and science and the progress of humanity, that list is getting shorter and shorter. But still, there are things that no matter what, you cannot acquire them. There are people that are born with an incredibly beautiful voice. You can't, you can't beat that, right? If, you, if your voice is naturally very harsh, you can make it a little bit better, but you're not going to become Mishari Al-Afasi, for example, right? So I can work hard on my physical exercise, but I don't think that I will ever become the fastest man that walked the face of the earth. There are people that are born with those athletic tendencies and so forth. Uh, there are people who are born with amazing organizational skills to the extent of, uh, of obsession, right? There are people who are so talented with uh, musical instruments, with the piano or whatever. It's just this is how their brain is, has been uh, uh, created. And by definition, the gift requires no compensation and has no restrictions or conditions attached. Right? Now, what, is it, what does it mean to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Wahhab? Al-Wahhab, the bestower, the giver of gifts, the bestower of blessings, the one who gives you endlessly without one expecting any return from you, Number two, without imposing any conditions upon you. Compare that with Allah's name as Shakur. Remember as Shakur, the one who offered thanks exponentially disproportionate to the good deeds that you have performed. But you still need to do something good to be thanked for. Allah's name Al Wahhab, He gives gifts to people without them having to earn it or deserve it or without them having to do anything in return to reciprocate on one condition and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them that's it and Wahhab is in that same category of names that testify to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such as al wadud al rahim al jabbar remember those tender names that speak to the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us well this name al Wahhab is one of those names when you know that Allah is willing to bestow gifts on you without you having to earn or deserve any of them and without you ever being expected to do something in return, that's called a gift. And let us compare that to other things in order to understand it. If you work for a month and you get a paycheck at the end of that month, is that a gift? No, because that is what is expected of you. 
If you work for a month and you get a gift card with the same value of your paycheck, will that be considered a gift? No, it's just euphemism. We say gift card, but it's just a compensation. If you buy a gift for someone on their birthday, and then when it's your birthday, you're expecting them to buy you a gift, and when they don't, you get upset. Is that a gift? Is what you gave them a gift? No, it's just down payment. <laughs> it's a down payment for a service that you're expecting in return. If it truly is a gift, you give it out of your good heart because you love that person. No conditions attached and no expectations out of it whatsoever. I'm just helping you understand Al-Wahhab subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, I'm, I'm going to remind myself and remind you, my brothers and sisters, of some of the most beautiful gifts that Allah has given us. And I would like to start with the very first one. The very first gift that Allah has given you without expectation, without you having done anything to deserve it whatsoever. And that is the beautiful gift of life. The gift of life, without which you, have been, you would have been nothing. Nothing. Without life, I would have never been able to sit here and speak to you and take care of my children and take care of my wife and my family and serve the community and enjoy that service and enjoy two rak'ahs at night in which my tears will flow out of feeling the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar ibn al-Khattab used to say, one of the few things that make this life bearable is a few minutes in the middle of the night in which we pray. Life is a constant state of suffering. And if it wasn't for Salatul Qiyam, Salatul Layl, prayer at night, this life of ours would have never been bearable. We can only taste the pleasures of this life because Allah gave us a gift at the very beginning and that is the gift of life. What have you done in order to earn it? Think about that. If we need to do something to earn it or to deserve it, what have we done in order to earn existence? Have you thought of that? And then on top of that, he gives you this, this earth. And he makes you the trustee. Consult with evolutionists and scholars of biology and physics. They'll tell you how unlikely it is for life to evolve in this universe. Don't they say that all the time? That life in this universe is just a fluke. It was not supposed to happen, but it did happen. By chance or per chance. But was it by chance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted it to happen. True, it was so unlikely. It's what biologists say. I mean, look at this massive universe of ours. There's nothing out there. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused life to exist on this earth as his very first gift to us as al -Wahha. And it's so interesting because we take that for granted. The angels themselves envy you. They envy you of what you have. When Allah told them that He was going to create man, what did they say? Ya Allah, are you going to create someone that will spill blood and spread mischief? And we, we are right here mentioning your name and celebrating your praises. Ya Allah, how about us? Why don't you pick us and make us your Khalifa on earth? But Allah doesn't do that. He selects you to become his Khalifa. I mean, think about it. What have I done? What have I done to earn the great status of Allah's trustee on earth? Are you able to understand Al-Wahhab now? You see what a hiba, a gift is? Take every day as a gift. Take every breath you take as a gift. Every heartbeat you cannot control, you take that as a gift. Rather than complain every minute of the day about how things are, think of, the, think of the things that you take for granted and you never remember. What is the difference between Wahhab and Wahib? Al-Wahib is someone who gives the gifts once or twice or a few times. But if you give a gift on a continuous and regular, consistent basis, that makes you Wahhab. Now, can we be, can the human being be Wahhab? Can the human being be Wahhib? I can be Wahhib. I mean, I can, I can give a gift to someone. 
but it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is Wahhab. Because He is the provider of gifts that never stops, continuous, consistent, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I mean, ironically, when you think about it, whatever gift you give others is not really yours. You're still taking from the gifts of Allah that He has given you and sharing them with other people. Right? Isn't that true? آمنوا بالله ورسوله وأنفقوا مما جعلكم مستخلفين فيه. He calls upon us and he says, believe in Allah and His Messenger and spend in charity from that which you have been entrusted with. Allah entrusted you with that wealth. It's not ours, but we pretend that it is ours. We pretend. We deceive ourselves. We say, oh, I have money. Let me take my wallet and go and buy a gift to my uh, uh, friend whose birthday is coming up next week. And it's so interesting because it, uh, it bites us when we do that. It pinches you when you have to buy a gift. 25 uh, gift card from Macy's or, or Barnes & Noble, whatever it is, it pinches you a little bit if you have to do that on a regular basis because you need to take, your, take out your wallet and spend money and buy a gift. Man, I have to spend all this money. It's just you're not 100% feeling great about it either. And something that is really funny happens in, in our community. You know the gift recycling process? You know what I'm talking about? Because you do it all the time, right? Someone buys you a gift, like you know, an old spice or perfume or something. And then your wife or your husband or whatever tries to open it to see what's in the gift. And then you know, you're going to go like, don't open it. <laughs> Leave it in the wrap. Because next week there's someone we're invited to go to someone's house we're gonna use this gift and give it to them <laughs> but that's the whole thing about gifts because we are a little bit stingy when it comes to spending money and we have to force ourselves to buy gifts and so forth and we don't even do it that often even though Prophet ﷺ encourages us he says tahadu tahabu give gifts to each other so that you are able to love each other so a gift is about love see al wahhab is about love. The provider of gifts, the bestower of gifts, it's entirely about love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. And that's why I keep saying, worship Allah with the purpose of earning His love. Because if Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, you will be in that exclusive category of human beings who don't have to worry about anything because they're always receiving the gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Wahhab. You don't have to worry about things and earn things and deserve things every single time. Now, if we feel the pinch of spending and then our wealth is depleted a little bit when we spend, do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels any restriction or limitation like that? Al-Wahhab subhanahu wa ta'ala. His wealth is endless. His dominion has no bound. Listen to this beautiful hadith, Hadith al-Qudusi. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تعالى لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على قلب أتقى رجل واحد منكم ما زاد ذلك في ملك شيء If all of you, he speaks to all of the creation, if all of you from the first to the last human and jinn, every single one of you where all of you had the heart of the best and most pious person amongst you. That will not add anything to my dominion or my wealth. Right? It won't. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَوَّلَكُمْ وَآخِرَكُمْ وَإِنْسَكُمْ وَجِنَّكُمْ كَانُوا عَلَىٰ أَفْجَرِ قَلْبِ رَجُلٍ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْكُمْ مَا نَقُصَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ مُلْكِ شَيْئًا And if all of you, the first and the last, the good and the bad, the human and the jinn, had the heart of the worst and most evil people amongst you, that will never diminish or reduce my wealth. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَوَّلَكُمْ وَآخِرَكُمْ وَإِنْسَكُمْ وَجِنَّكُمْ قَامُوا إِلَيَّ فِي صَعِيدٍ وَاحِدٍ وَسَأَلَنِي كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَسْأَلَةٍ فَأَعْطَيْتُهَا إِيَّاهِ مَا نَقُصَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ مُلْكِ إِلَّا كَمَا يُنْقِصُ الْمِخْيَةُ مِنَ الْبَحْرِ And if all of you, from the very first to the very last, good or bad, young or old, human or jinn, stood in one valley and all of you raised your hands in prayer and every single one of you asked me one thing and I gave it to them. 
That will not diminish my dominion except with the equivalent of what a needle would diminish from the ocean when you dip it and take it out. When you take a needle and dip it in the ocean and then you take it out, what's still stuck on the needle? Small droplet of water. That's possibly what is diminished from Allah's wealth if He gave each and every one of us what we asked for. Subhanahu wa ta'ala al wahhab You able to identify with it now? Feel it. Feel the wahb, the wahb, the hiba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some of you might confuse al wahhab with al razzaq right? Because we talked about al razzaq before. The provider of sustenance. What is the difference between rizq and hiba? Hiba is a gift that we don't have to work for. It just comes to us by surprise. Oh my God, thank you. I didn't expect that. But rizq, on the other hand, is something that you have to work for. Let me correct some stereotypes here. There are so many people who think that their sustenance will come to them no matter what. Your rizq will come to you, you don't have to worry about it. Conventional wisdom suggests. And I say that is not true. Allah says in the Quran, فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ Famshu, you have to walk first. You have to struggle. You have to go out there and hustle. Now your rizq is existing somewhere. It might be under a rock. But it will not come to you unless you go search for it. Will someone else ever turn that rock and take your rizq from underneath? It will never happen. Your share is there somewhere out there. It could be here, it could be in another state, it could be in another country. But it's out there. You need to show Allah that you're working so hard and you search for it. Rizq requires struggle and working hard. Al Wahhab subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need any of that. Hiba is a gift, it will come to you with no effort while you're just sitting at home. I'll give you some examples at the end of the khatir, inshaAllah. Rizq is something that we take for granted because it's, it's what we have to see every single day, right? But the hibah comes as a surprise. Your parents buy you clothes all the time. You might not say thank you because it's an expectation. You're not going to be sitting naked at home. So you're wearing your PJs. And it's an assumption. My parents buy my clothes. But when your parents buy you a car unexpectedly, when you graduate, when you've had amazing grades, when you went to a great college, that is unexpected. That's a gift. And you thank them for it. You see the difference? And I'm not even going to talk about regular things. I will talk about things that you see every day. Have you ever thought that sunlight is rizq? Sunlight is rizq. Why? Because there are some people like us who have a little bit too plenty of sunlight. And then there are people who live in Southern California with just incredible sunlight all year long. And then there are people who live in other places such as Seattle who hardly get any sunlight. It's their risk, right? That's their risk. Enjoying the beautiful stars, that's risk. Have you thought of that before? A breath of fresh air is risk. Do you think Allah about those things every time? I don't think we do. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We don't do that. I don't think, I don't think we even ever remember to thank Allah for breathing. But breathing is rizq. And when you have shortness of breath, you realize what that actually means. Having children is rizq or hiba. It's hiba, right? That's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a gift from Allah. In fact, in the Quran, He uses the word hiba every time He talks about children. In the story of Dawood alayhi salam, wa wahabna li Dawooda, Sulaiman. In the story of Ibrahim, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ Right? In the story of Zakaria, when he speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَهَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ هَلْيَعْقُوبَ Every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about children, He calls it hiba. It's a gift. Something that you cannot take for granted. Some of you have a hard time with their kids and are saying, SubhanAllah, is there any return policy in that? <laughs> Don't think like that. It doesn't matter how, how hard your kids 
uh, have, have become a difficult, it's just an incredible blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take it as it is and be thankful for it. Having a good spouse, is that rizq or gift? It's a gift. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed your survival. He did not guarantee your companionship. That's something you need to uh, just kind of like wait. Some people work so hard for so many years to find a spouse, and then the spouse comes from the most unexpected direction. They knock on every door, and then the spouse comes from the window. <laughs> right? It just happens. And you hear stories about this, subhanAllah, all the time. There are people who marry the very first woman they met in their lives, never had any relationship, never spoke with any person, never entered any home. The very first woman they saw and attempted to get married to becomes their wife. I'm included, alhamdulillah, in that list. With the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are people who try for 10 years, and it just doesn't work out. It's a gift. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a gift. Some of you might say, my husband is a gift? Are you serious? Astaghfirullah. <laughs> yes, he is. For the time being, at least. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us um, other gifts. You know, think about this. You are going about your day and you're just, you know, business as usual. And if you've always wanted to go for Umrah. How many of you performed Umrah before and visited the holy sites? Not that many. Not that many. And I'm sure that many of us, just, there's fire in our hearts to go visit the Kaaba and visit the, the place where the Prophet ﷺ took steps. But then you can't afford it. And one day, you get a call from someone, says to you, let's just go for Umrah. And don't worry about it, I'll pay for your ticket. What do you call that? It's a gift. From whom? From your friend? From the Lord of your friend, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is sending you a ticket to his house. He says, I want you to come to me. You see how that could be a gift? You are so far away from Allah for so many years. And you, know, you feel kind of have ambivalent views. And sometimes you feel bad. Sometimes life is taking you. So you don't think about it. But one of those nights, it just happens that you wake up at four in the morning. And then you have this insomnia. You can't fall asleep. And then you say to yourself, wait. It's four o'clock and Fajr is like an hour away. Why don't I make some wudu and pray? And then you make wudu and you pray salat al qiyam. And you're overtaken by emotions. And you're crying. And you're making dua that you've never made before. And, and it's just a feeling that you've never experienced ever in your life before. And you don't know why. I'm not particularly religious. I didn't, haven't been attending Jummah for, for like six months. I, I, I pray like I, I don't pray regularly. And then all of a sudden I feel like this. What do you call that? That's a hiba from Al Wahab subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a gift. You might not be a very religious person, but he still gives it to you because he loves you. He sees something good in you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like that's a gift. Healing from an illness is a gift. It's not something we take for granted, right? There are people, I'm sure you know, you, you heard the stories. They have, you know, God forbid, cancer or really another chronic illness and they go with it for years. And all of a sudden it just disappears. How often did you hear about that? It happens a lot. I wouldn't have. In fact, Wallahi, brothers and sisters, this is a personal story. My family knows this, but this happened to me. Ever since I was a kid and I had this heartburn issue, any food I ate, it just gives me heartburn because I had uh, acid reflux and so forth. And I went like this, you know, my, my childhood, my teenage years, through college, you know, all the way up until I was doing my masters. And I, I just, I remember making dua every once in a while. It wasn't, it was a painful issue, but it's not something that I remember sitting down and asking Allah to relieve me. And I remember performing endoscopy and, and the doctor says, you know, this is mild to severe inflammation in your esophagus. It was pretty serious. And then I decided right then and there that, you know, I, I, maybe I need to change my diet. So I went on a, 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 a full organic diet for a year and a half, back in Chicago. And at the end of that one and a half years, it, it, it was literally two weeks, I remember them, two weeks, in which I, I, I feel that I don't have any symptoms anymore. So I went for another endoscopy. 
And of course, you know, endoscopy is a pretty annoying process. They have to uh, um, put you to sleep, and then they shove this uh, huge thing into your throat, and it goes into your stomach. It's pretty weird. So they performed endoscopy, and then afterwards, I was sitting with a doctor, and he's looking at the report, and he said, this cannot be a report from the same person who had that report a year and a half ago. Allah al This is my personal story. I, I'm telling you, this is not someone told me the story, this is me. And he said, it cannot be that for the same person. It has to be a mistake. There's absolutely no trace of inflammation here. And a year and a half ago, it says mild to severe. That doesn't make any sense. It was actually, the doctors warned me, it might uh, develop the, the Garrett's esophagus condition, which might be precancerous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect all of us. All of a sudden, you heal. You don't know why. I didn't even make dua. And this is not an invitation to be lazy and not to pray. It's an invitation to you to try and do whatever it is that you can do in order to be included in the exclusive group that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I can't claim that. I don't know. I don't know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, loves me or not, but I know that He gave me a gift. That's what I know. So healing from an illness without any medical intervention is a gift from Al-Wahhab subhanahu wa ta'ala. And since we are in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, the observance of Laylatul Qadr is also a gift. When was the very first Laylatul Qadr, by the way? When was the very first Laylatul Qadr? Who experienced it? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa When? When he received the Quran for the first time. That was his Laylatul Qadr. Why do I say that? Because he has been working for months and years before, going to the cave, worshipping, searching for the truth, pouring his heart out, crying, Ya Allah, if you're there, show me a sign, show me something. I cannot accept the idols. There's just something wrong with this society. I need you. And when he reached that level, he was right. It was his own Laylatul Qadr and Al Wahhab subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to him. He spoke to the angel and said, I think Muhammad is ready. Ya Jibreel, why don't you go talk to him right now? That could be your Laylatul Qadr. You decide for yourselves which night in the remaining nights of Ramadan will be yours. Show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your best and Al Wahhab will not, will not hold anything away from you. Show him your best. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you so abundantly that it will completely change your life. I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who earn his gifts in the life of this world. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who earn his love, among those who earn the blessings and the strength and the power and the status of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. I ask Allah to help each and every one of us observe it before the month of Ramadan is over. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if our hearts are not clean enough to receive this gift this year, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us purify our hearts. And if we missed out this year, I ask Allah to give us a long life to be able to reach next Ramadan and experience it then. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to extend our lives so we witness and experience Ramadan year after year and to be forgiven and to be blessed. And I ask Allah to shower His gifts upon us, Al-Wahhab subhanahu wa ta'ala, to shower his gifts upon us abundantly. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa qumu illa salatu wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gems for the Traveler. Uh, if you have any questions about the material you just watched, or if you would like to come to Salam in order to join us for one of the services, please visit our website at www.salamcenter.org or you can visit my Facebook page www.facebook.com slash Imam Aziz. I hope that this episode touched your hearts spiritually as it did ours. God bless you all. Thank you.